Well, greetings from London here and the Grange of British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Today we're live in Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, and I'll stop talking in that ultra creepy way. So anyway, what do we have on the bench with us today? Well, on the right, we have one of my tape decks. Now, this is the tape deck that I use as the audio mixer when I'm doing my YouTube videos. And you might be able to see that the meters are moving every time I speak. So with this, I can mix in the sound from projects I do, such as my Superhead AM radio, so you can hear how it sounds for yourself, rather than being played through a pair of speakers. Anyway, the problem is that... Where I usually put this, I cannot see the meters. So I thought to myself, well, I've got this display module just kicking around, and it does three important things. Shows me the voltage, shows me the ambient temperature, and it also has a level indicator right here, which is being reluctant to show itself. And I found out that has a level meter just purely by accident when I was mucking around with it. However, it won't measure audio output from a line source. So let me just hook this up here. Now we should be seeing a meter on. We should be seeing either the left or the right meter there. And as you can see, there is no meter. But let's just hook this up to the positive of the power supply. And you can see we now have a level meter right there. Same with the green wire. Let's hook this up to the positive. And now we've got the left, if I can just get that good connection there. So, what we've got here is something that's designed to measure speaker output level and not line output level. So we need to do something about that. Okay, so I've done a little bit of a reverse engineering. So let's see if there's anything we can change to make this a bit more sensitive. So we do have a voltage divider here got this 6.8k resistor and this 1k resistor so if I was to bridge that out and uh, maybe increase that one you should get a little bit more response but I don't think it's really going to make too much of an improvement but anyway the basic circuit is we've got a diode a resistor Zener for over voltage protection and then we've got this capacitor here for the peak hold and then there's the chip right there so all this stuff around here is for the audio input and everything from here to here I'm not sure what that does but at a best guess I guess that would be for the temperature sensor I haven't really reverse engineered it that far yet but let's see if we can come up with something so here's what I've come up with a little circuit using a certain component called a transistor So, anyway, what this is, is just a little circuit that's going to boost the voltage, hopefully enough to make that thing work. And this variable resistor here is to adjust the bias, because I want to uh, experiment with that and try a few things. Well, here's the circuit built up on the breadboard, and I've got it hooked up to my very messy oscilloscope. So we've got one cable connecting the output of this tape recorder to the transistor amplifier. These two are going out to the oscilloscope and these great big fat wires are to carry all the current that this power sucking single transistor amplifier is going to require. So, suppose I better turn it on. Okay, we're on, but not seeing any action. So I'm just going to tweak the variable resistor here and hopefully we should see something. Oh, here we are. There we go. It is amplifying. Let me just let me just center that. That's not very biased very well. Let me try and get a full AC waveform. Alright, okay. So there is the output from our single transistor. 
So let's see if that's going to be enough for our VU meters. Well, to be quite honest, I didn't expect it to work. I got a little blip on the level meter when I was when I connected it, but that's about all I got. So all we've got is just a charge capacitor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that out. I'm going to connect this directly to the transistor without the capacitor. Let's see what we get. And of course it would help if I plugged it into the right hole. Okay, there we go. Well, we got a little bit of meter action there, and it's sort of going back and forth with the audio signal, but it's not really, um, it's not really responding the way we want it to. Okay, so my next idea is to turn this into a DC amplifier instead of an AC amplifier so it rectifies the incoming audio and amplifies it. Okay, so this is what we're getting at the moment. Now, I know it looks like we've got AC, but this is actually a DC waveform where this is about the midway point, and that's sort of zero volts, that's whatever volts. But anyway, we need to adjust this so we only see the top half of the waveform. So I'm going to adjust the potentiometer until we only see the top part of the waveform, which seems to be right about there, I'd say. Okay, so now I've adjusted the potentiometer, and as you can see, the waveform now, when I speak, is very, very different. We've now got something that looks like a lot of little mountains on the horizon. Whenever I say something, let's connect this to our level meter and see if this makes any difference. Okay, well, everything's starting to look a bit more like a Frankenstein's laboratory now, but you might have noticed that now, when I speak, we get a little bit of response out of one of the VU meters. Although it's not quite how I want it, but I'm pretty sure I can fix that. However, what I am doing is I'm taking the signal from the little amplifier that I made and I'm injecting it right here. So I'm bypassing all of this. So now I'm just going to adjust the variable resistor. And I want this so when there's no audio, there's still about one bar visible. I'm sure we can do that, so... Oh. All right. That looks like that's working pretty good. I'm not getting the full range, but, but that's a lot better than what I was getting before when we were practically getting nothing at all. So, the next thing to do, I think to make a few little modifications to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this resistor and this resistor. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to replace those with jumpers. That way I can use the original wires and there won't be any resistors in the way to, well, resist the signal. And also I'm going to change this resistor here and this resistor here to 10k that way it will hold the peak better and it's not going to load down this circuit and the other good thing and I'm going to leave the diodes in because then I won't need a diode here I can just use the internal diode on the board okay it's a little while later now and you might have noticed that the level meter is now measuring in stereo so, I've done my little modification here. Changed these two resistors to 10K and just replaced those other two resistors with jumpers. Added a second circuit for the right sound. And here we are. Although the left seems to be a little bit more responsive than the right, but we can fix that. I mean, all we need to do here is increase the resistance of the input and that's going to fix that. But that's going to be for another day when I put this onto a circuit board. Anyway, what I do want to show you is how well this will work with a stereo music source. And I've decided what better source to use than chip music. Okay, well I won't play too much of that. 
And now to answer the inevitable question you're going to ask about what song I used. If that's any help to you, then there you go. So, anyway, this is the schematic of what I've got so far. So, this is our modified level meter. And this is the circuitry that makes it work. Now, there are actually two of these circuits, so there's one for the left channel and one for the right channel, but I've just drawn one of these to make it more simple. As you can see, they're both connected to the same 12 volt power supply, which is also the same 12 volt power supply my tape recorder is connected to. There are some noisy kids outside. So, anyway, this is to bias the transistor so it's at full saturation or very close to full saturation because we need it right there and I'll explain why in just a minute and this is to limit the incoming signal and I might replace that with a variable resistor so I can adjust that well I will replace that with a variable resistor when I build the full thing and now to finish off let's look at some boring graphs so this is three ways the transistor could be biased if we bias the transistor at its midway point, like in an audio amplifier, as the audio signal swings negative, the voltage we get out of the circuit is going to rise, and as it swings positive, the voltage is going to fall. But, when there's nothing going into the transistor, it's going to be about halfway, and that's not what we want for a meter. Now, if we bias the transistor where it's near its cutoff, that's not going to work either, because when the audio signal swings negative, the voltage is just, just going to stay near the full output voltage, and as it swings positive, the output voltage is going to fall. So, that's not good either. However, if we bias the transistor where it's nearly saturated, this time, when the audio signal swings negative, the voltage we get out of the circuit is going to rise, and when it swings positive, it's pretty much just going to stay at zero volts. And also, when there's no signal, it's going to be at zero volts. Or very close to zero volts, because I've actually got this bias, so there's one bar showing on the meter when there's no signal. So yeah, when there's no audio coming in, it's going to be close to zero volts, but not quite at zero volts. And of course, when the audio signal swings positive, it's going to go down a little bit, but that's not really going to have too much effect, it's not really gonna, you know, it's neither here nor there, so uh, it also doesn't matter that we're amplifying the negative part of the signal because it's an audio signal, it's AC, so it doesn't really matter, and anyway, that's why I'm gonna leave this video because, well, I've got tacos waiting for me, and I've gotta edit this video, so yeah, in the next part I'll be putting this onto a proper board and everything, but anyway, until next time, goodbye. Because I've yapped on far enough.